Many thanks for joining us here on Newsdesk. Let's start off with that particular one about the media and flag bearer of the People's National Convention, Dr. Edward Mahama, has lashed out at Ghanaian media saying 99.5% of them are corrupt. Now, he said Ghana is failing in her fight against corruption because the media itself is corrupt. Dr. Mama was speaking to journalists after a ceremony at Fumbisi in the Upper East region to formally confirm the sitting MP for Bursa South, Al Hassan Azong, as the parliamentary candidate for the third consecutive time on a ticket of the PNC. Upper East correspondent Albertori has more. <laughs> Alhassan Azong won the Bruce South Constituency Parliamentary seat in 2008, snatching it from the NDC. He retained the seat in the 2012 elections. Although not a member of the NDC, Azong was appointed Minister of State responsible for public sector reform by late President John Atamills in the NDC government from 2009 to 2013. In 2013, he was renominated by President John Mahama to the same position as the Minister of State. Al Hassan Azong is currently the only PNC MP in Ghana's parliament. On Saturday, he got the nod at a mammoth event at Fumbisi to contest the seat again on the ticket of the PNC in the November elections. In attendance were the party's flag bearer, Dr. Edward Mahama, and national chairman Bernard Mona. Speaking at the event, 9.5% of them are corrupt. The media has become part of the corruption in the system. The corruption now is not left to the politicians. Civil servants, public servants, private industry, all of that area, there's corruption. And the media has failed to do what it should do to help us fight the corruption. Speaking after his confirmation, Member of Parliament for Bilsa South, Al Hassan Azong, said, he is confident of retaining the seat despite the NDC's fielding a strong candidate, Dr. Clement Apart. So I came from third position. So let's start off on that particular note, and I'm sure you did hear that very comment from the PNC flag bearer, Dr. Edward Mahama, suggesting that uh, more than 99.5% of the, the Ghanaian media is corrupt. And, uh, we're trying to have a conversation on this particular issue. We'll be bringing in the Ghana, uh, Journalist, Ghana Journalist Association as well. But let's start off with uh, this conversation with uh, Mr. Yabwedwa Yabwafo. He's a seasoned journalist. He's also the director for newspapers at the Graphic Communications Group. He's joining me live now over the telephone lines with some thoughts on the issue. Mr. Yabwafo, uh, good morning. Many thanks for joining us here on News Day, sir. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, 99.5 uh, of the... 99.5% of the media, uh, apparently, we are as corrupt as we make others seem to be. Uh, does well, this I, come to you yeah, as a surprise? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I will not deny that there are some journalists who might be corrupt and they have been used to corruptible practices. But I cannot conjecture that 99.5% of Ghanaian journalists are corrupt. If 99.5% of Ghanaian journalists are corrupt, we will not have seen the vibrancy of the media the way that we have seen it. So I, it can never be true. Mm. Except that even 1.1% even of journalists are corrupt, that is bad enough and that must be resisted. Why then would the PNC flag bearer make such a sweeping statement? If I mean, he can't just get up and just put out any number. Well, I don't know how many Ghanaian journalists he has had personal contact with. And therefore, you know, and I don't know whether he also has that <laughs> about the number of Ghanaian journalists to come to that distance of 99.9%. I mean, definitely, it can never be true. But as I said, if even the 0 0.1%, we have to resist it. That's one of the reasons why some of us have been emphasizing on the enforcement of our code of ethics in the sense that we do. We also have been emphasizing on the necessity for us to demonstrate independence in the discharge of our responsibility so that we can win the confidence of the public. But, I mean, it is too distant for me to believe that 99, because I do not see myself as being part of the 99.5%, and I cannot say that in my office, I mean, that 99% of my journalists are corrupt. I, I cannot, and I do not subscribe to that, except that sometimes politicians in, in the week of certain times make certain statements, because if you call him to show proof, 
about about what he's saying that ask him how many journalists are in Ghana and how many of them he has encountered and how many of them have been influenced by him or by people that he has known. He, he might not have those details. You know, also, it's, it's a sweet based statement, but it is a call on us also to demonstrate credibility in, in the way that we go about our job and show integrity so that we can convince the people that we are not as bad as some of them might assume. Let me find out uh, this perception. I mean, it may not be true, like you're claiming, that uh, we have uh, uh, as much as 99.5% of the Ghanaian media being corrupt. But even the mere perception of this thing being a, a possibility, uh, how much of a problem is that? Particularly seeing that we are in an election year. No, definitely that's what I am saying. That is even 0.001% of, of the journalists are corrupt. That is bad enough. And that's why we need to fight it. You know, we need to resist any attempt at that. Now, we cannot say that there are no decent journalists around. But there may be a few people who have soiled their hands with political money. I mean, there are some of us. I mean, look, I mean, they can put the, the microscope on us and see mm -hmm. what we have been doing, whether we have taken anybody something before we do the things that we do. Okay, so, and so I, can, I can also look at what happens. And... Some of the revelations that have come about have come about through journalists. And if indeed that number of journalists were that bad, nobody will have heard about Okay, of, it's, it's, of good, it's good you speak of it's good you speak of some of these things because uh, other people have suggested that uh, for you to get a particular uh, bill or motion or any agenda to move forward, you just pass it through the media. You can just get a few people, give them some money, and push it. And some have also complained that because of the poor working conditions, particularly in the media, it makes uh, those persons involved in the profession a lot more susceptible to bribery and corruption. Uh, yes, are these not I, fair assessments? No, I'm saying that I will not deny that, you know, because there have been incidents, there have been instances mm. where people have openly fought over, over, over money and all that. Well, journalists have fought over money. Yes. I mean, when they have gone on assignment and in distri the distribution of whatever is given to them, they have exchanged words and all that. Yeah, but that, those are true. We cannot run away from them. And, but it, it can never be true that 99 point something percent of Ghanaian journalists are corrupt. That's what I'm saying in that. If Dr. Namhawa doesn't know the number of journalists in Ghana, I mean, how many of them that he has personally had encounter with? We have given him coverage as, as, as editor of Graphic during his presidential period. We gave him coverage for all those years. Did he ever hear that or pass innocent before we did what we did? We did not do that. So I'm not denying the fact that there may be corrupt journalists, but I am saying that for heaven's sake, it cannot be 99 point something percent of the Ghanaian journalists. Right. Mr. Bodua Ebuafu, many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. And Ya Bodua Ebuafu is the director for newspapers at the Graphic Communications Group. And uh, he's been uh, helping us understand a few things. Well, he does agree that uh, there are journalists in the country that are corrupt, but he does not agree with the percentage being churned out. But let's go on to the phone lines once more. Speak to Afal Moni, who is president of the Ghana Journalists Association. He's also joining the conversation right about now. So, Mr. Moni, uh, good morning. Many thanks for your time on News Desk as well. Uh, good morning. And uh, uh, this obviously, entering into such territory, I, I'm not sure this is such comfort comforting news for you, hearing that uh, over 99.5% of your members are corrupt. Uh, first of all, we'll question the empirical basis of this uh, uh, conclusion that 99% of Ghanaians are corrupt. And I uh, um, don't know when the survey was conducted and what went into the survey and what the findings are. And uh, But we'll be the, the first to admit that journalists are human, and like all human institutions, perfection is an impossible goal. So we have a fair share of imperfection. And we will also be the first to admit that we are not fighter than fight. Neither are we uh, um, uh, pure than pure. But the, by the virtue of our profession, the, the nature of our profession imposes on us the responsibility to exercise oversight responsibility over, 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 over others. And uh, when it comes to 
exposed to corruption. And that's if there's any uh, institution which, which, which can come near the media in terms of exposing perceived or rare acts of morphosis. We all uh, can um, testify that it took a journalist, a single journalist, to bring the whole foundation of uh, judiciary uh, uh, tumbling down. And uh, we, it, it, it also resulted in, in a shake-up, uh, the first of its kind in the history of judiciary in, in this country. We've had, we, have, we can cite copious examples about what the media have done to um, also uh, expose that spot in, in both high and low places. Okay, so, um, so Mr. Fomoni, some would say these are exceptions. These names you are mentioning are exceptions. And uh, I mean, l let's put even the, the, the percentage uh, figure aside. 99.5% for you, you might say is the middle of the high side. But even the mere perception that majority of Ghanaians, uh, majority of journalists in Ghana are corrupt. Is that not a worrying thing? And um, um, I think the worry we will, will, will dwell on the fact that uh, it, it has, there, that's what we have some very kind of As I said, we are questioning the the, the authenticity of that. Uh, so, so you don't uh, believe that majority of Ghanaian journalists are corrupt? I I I I I I don't believe I don't believe majority of Ghanaian journalists are corrupt. Of course, that should that should, you know that is not that is should we know um, uh, we there no question of just banding anything about. So we, as I said, I admit that we are human. So. So corruption is something rare in the media. Mm. Who is the they, first to admit? Mm, mm, Mr. Fomoni, there have been, 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 been instances, there have been a, a number of instances where we are told journalists have either fought over Soleil or have gone to the Flagstaff House and have been given monies uh, purported to be yes. bribes and, and all. I, I, are are I, these all not things that lend credence to this particular claim by the PNC flag bearer? And this, this is what I said, that we be the first to admit that no, we, we are not perfect because perfection in any human institution is an impossible goal. So it's, it's not possible for general to to be to be perfect. Yeah, so we are not boasting that we are not boasting. We are not not, not that we pride ourselves on anything less perfection. We have we, we have we have um, thinness, professional thinness in the media. But that does not obscure the fact that uh, many of them are also doing well. Many of them are incorruptible, and uh, many of them will have their heads high and you know, their, their chest out and, high, and, and chin high. Mm -hmm. Many of them are, are so faithful to their profession, so faithful to, to their integrity that nothing, nothing at all can, can sway them you know, to do anything on so on. So these are people I'm talking about. And uh, we, we, it's no survey, as far as I'm concerned, no survey has been conducted. We point to the fact that as, as many as 99% of them are corrupt. And I said, we, we, we have some corruptible elements in the media, and uh, just because the entry point is so loose, just because anybody else can just get up and practice journalism, and we, we really, and by the approach, we know them. But we, we have a doubt that 99% of journalists in this country right. are, are, are yeah. corrupt. Okay, but Mr. Mr. Fermoni, one, one, one thing I would like to uh, add here. Uh, one would say, assuming, without admitting that this perception is even true or this, this statement put out is even true, some are attributing it to the fact that the, GA, the GJA, the, your, your very own association, you've done a pretty terrible job at fighting for the rights of journalists, ensuring that journalists are paid the right amount of money due them. Uh, would you say there's a fair assessment on your part? No, but this is a, this is a, this, this is a reflection of what's happening in this country. We, we all know that. We don't have to go on site because... And they, 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 they believe that they, what, they don't get what is due them. And we don't need to that. But if, so if, 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 if there are journalists in the country who are currently earning less than the minimum wage, if journalists, for instance, are earning as low as 300 cities, 500 cities, and, and the like, clearly you can't say that's the general situation in the country, so we should be okay with that. I mean, I, 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 truly, I believe that uh, there's a relationship between the conditions of journalists and the quality of journalism in this country. There's a clear relationship between the two. But in a situation where the entry point is so loose, where anybody, anybody at all can just get up to establish a media system, where people who are qualified are not qualified, where people who are not called are not, are not called with pathogenism, where people are prepared for, for, uh, for want of uh, 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 job openings, are prepared to take anything at all. In some worst case scenarios, some journalists are not paid at all. 
and uh, and this this can lend itself to all kinds of uh, 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 misbehaviors. But um, what we say is that this is a national issue. It's a reflection. Uh, how much is even the president pay? How much is he pay? And every sector has issues over salary. And because I believe what we see uh, has a relationship with with, with, with the economy. If the, if the economy 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 strength is so skittish, then to expect this kind of uh, salaries and then and then and then agitations for salary uh, 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 adjustment here and there. But you know, we come back to the media. We we we. I, I don't think we should paint all of us with the same artistic brush because uh, we sessions of the media are doing so well, phenomenally well, to the extent that they, they ignite pride not only in media consumers. But also all over the world. So Our media system. If, if, if I understand you, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Fomoni, are, are you are you justifying the fact that you've been unable to fight for the rights of journalists this whole time, particularly when it comes to uh, am amount of monies that are paid them? Is no, that what you're doing? Speak, for the first time in the history of Ghana, we don't want to blow our horns. Uh, for the first time in the history of Ghana, we've come out. We are coming out with uh, a pension scheme. As I said, many of those who are named for massacre. Uh, those were the days when uh, we are yes, yes, when um, the government was the largest, um, largest employer of journalists. This is no longer the case because, as we speak, our media landscape is listed with as many as 400 radio stations. Mm. You can imagine. And from San Dema out to Azim. Uh, and then look at the people who are managed. Some best qualification is SHS. And some are semi literate because of lack of job openings. And, and this is not a reflection of what's happening in other sectors, where right. people do not uh, take to the minimum wage, and okay. then they, they, they exploit uh, uh, their workers. But um, to address this issue, uh, we, we, we are coming with a pension pack for journalists, because many, many of those who are, who are, who are consigned uh, to, to lead lives of the institutions uh, because there's no thing like that. Okay. And uh, right. over, uh, we also, um, for the first time, uh, uh, light is flipping at the end of the tunnel that uh, we will empower the galley to demand what is due us. In fact, it, it has taken uh, more than two years to arrive at where we are now. Okay. Um, uh, bargaining power. Um, the CUC has fastened the DG to empower us legally so that we can, we can okay. also demand what we right. do our members. So, so essentially, the GGA deserves a pass on the back. Right. With the fullness of time. Okay. Mr. Afalmoni, many thanks for your time on Newsdesk this morning. Afalmoni is the president of the Ghana Journalists Association. He's also uh, been with us on that particular discussion uh, of the corrupt Ghanaian media, apparently. Uh, both persons, I, both gentlemen I spoke to, don't seem to agree with that claim by the PNT flag bearer, Dr. Edward Mahama. We still stay with the media because the opposition New Patriotic Party has described as blatant falsehood a claim by radio show host at the from Paul Manso that the party's flag bearer, Nana Ekufado, once threatened his life and abused him because he was unhappy with his work on radio. Adakabre's comments were in response to the NPP's boycott of two media houses, that's OKFM OK and Neat FM, which both belong to the desperate group of companies and uh, what the party described as unfairness. Adakabre from Pomanson alleged on the Super Morning Show on Monday that the flag bearer of the NPP had threatened his life. He said he had, uh, he had several text messages from the NPP camp that states that he would be killed if he did not desist from Putin and Ado in Nevada. But the NPP in a statement yesterday refuted the allegations daring Adakabre from Paul Manson to substantiate his claims or retract and apologize for the comments made. But let's get more now from Deputy Communications Director of the Opposition New Patriotic Party, Anthony Cabo, who is joining me on phone now with some more on this. So, right, I'm told the line has dropped there, so we're unable to bring you that very conversation with Anthony Cabo, who happens to be the Deputy Communications Director of the Opposition New Patriotic Party. But we're taking a break here on Newsdays. When we come back, we'll be bringing a lot more discussions, particularly on the new appointment of uh, the Central Bank Governor. It seems to be generating a, a bit of a conversation on the outside. Let's try and uh, bring you uh, some clarity on that particular issue right here on Newsdays. Stay with us.